Welcome to Tackett's House of Horsepower. It's me, Steve Tackett. And now as promised, I was gonna I was gonna move Novas around and get that 65 in here, and we were gonna start taking that apart and going through it and emptying it out. And and you know, I was gonna start on the Nova. But last night, Sarah was able to get me an appointment because you gotta go online, you gotta make an account, you gotta log into your account. Then you got to make an appointment. And then, of course, it's at the Mesa one, which is an hour away from me, to get down and dirty squared away today. So instead of wrenching on Nova's, which is what I would rather be doing today, I'm going to pull the truck and trailer out. I'm going to put down and dirty on the trailer. I'm going to go all the way over to Mesa. Hopefully, we'll pass our final inspections and we'll get down and dirty squared away. Now, the reason why down and dirty has such a problem with its title is because it has a salvage title. Somewhere in its history, down and dirty was sent to the junkyard and somebody bought it out of the junkyard. So it has a salvage title. Now, the salvage title, you have to pass a level two, three, whatever, inspection, something, whatever. I'm about to go find out what exactly they're looking for. But basically, I'm gonna have a restored salvage title, hopefully by the end of the day. So that just tells you how close Down and Dirty was to being no more. It is absolutely a, a, a saved, I'm not gonna say salvage, a saved vehicle. So here we go. I'm going to probably lose all of today by the time I load the car, drive an hour, go to the inspection, put it back on the trailer, drive an hour back. I don't, I'm Basically, my day today is going to be shot. But I'll be out here tomorrow and I'll film what I can. We'll, we'll get it. We're going to we're going to get these Novas in here. We'll get we'll get something up for you guys this Friday. But wish me luck. I'm gonna go get the truck and trailer, and uh, here we go. Guess what? Guess what I have? Ha <laughs> ha! Look at that. Look at that. Arizona temporary registration and plates for one 1964 Chevelle. That means, you guessed it, down and dirty past. Level three inspection. Yeah. Let me just tell you, it took about two hours. They took, they took the car and put it on a rack and they checked it out. Like they checked the car out, okay? Which is strange for Arizona. I mean, some places up north and stuff, you know, you, they do vehicle inspections. Down here, we don't do all that ever, unless you have a salvage title that you're trying to put back in the system. So that being said, this is a cautionary tale, okay? If you buy something from the junkyard, if you buy something back from the insurance company after an accident, if you buy something without a title, bill of sale only, stuff like that, the paperwork gets ridiculous, okay? There's a reason why that car is on Marketplace. Title only, or no title, bill of sale only. Yeah, yeah. Call that guy up and be like, yeah, I'll buy it for parts car prices because that's what you have. You have a parts car. If you don't have a title, it's a parts car. Got it? Seriously, it's a major, major pain in the... Anyways, I'm gonna get started. Get me down that track. So anyways, yes, and it's done by police officers, armed police officers in full get up, you know? They took down and dirty, put it on the rack, and checked everything, lights and turns, beeping the horn, everything. They checked the numbers 
on the doors, frames, the cow tag, the frame. They're looking everywhere. They're, I mean, they're everywhere. Okay, two hours. I was sweating bullets, literally. I was pacing in the waiting room like a like a father having his first child or something. You know, police officers climbing in the car. It was. I thought about filming it, but then I thought eh, that's probably they probably don't want that. Yeah. <laughs> But anyways, went through it, down and dirty is legal. So, moving on to the real project this weekend. Look at that. Look who's here. The little 65. So last night, Sarah came home and I said, I need some help. She said, what do you wanna do? I said, I wanna push cars all around. And she said, okay. So we pushed the 63 out, we pushed the 65 in. Now we gotta make decisions. We gotta look this thing over real close and, and make decisions. I, I gotta be conscious of how far we wanna go with this car. How far do we wanna dig into this project? What, do we, what does the car need to get operational? and be you know safe and, and i do quality work so i'm not doing no sloppy work here i don't do that but i gotta be careful are we gonna take this thing all the way down put it on a rotisserie do a full restoration are, are we doing all that no because this car really wouldn't be worth it it's not the car is in pretty it's in it has some really good qualities and it has some really bad qualities and we'll we'll get in there and we'll look around it and we'll we're gonna assess this together we're gonna get through this together okay and i could use your help i could use some your your input and advice so the 65 here we go have to let the cry babies out because they'll sit there and cry if you don't so what we have here is a 1965 100 series Nova. What what I, I and to me these ha I have a soft spot for these because one of my best friends, he's always had one. Like my buddy Jason, he's always had. I think he's had about four of these, and they were all super badass. Like he loves these 100 series Novas for several reasons. One, we like the small back window. The 65 100 series Novas, the window doesn't go around the corner. So they have this body line right here and the window is small. So it has a small back window and it has no trim. There's no trim on a 100 series Nova. It has one emblem that goes here and that's about it. <laughs> Even the trunk back in the back they don't even have backup lights. They just have a chrome piece that covers the hole. The other 65s, they would have a big fat chrome piece that goes across. The 100 series doesn't. It just has a little tiny spear that goes in the middle. And then these get covered up. So they're super basic. This would be like the, the poor man's car. This would be the cheapest Nova. If you walked into the dealership in 1965, this is the base model. This is the cheap one. So they don't come with a lot of frills. They don't come with a lot of trim. They don't come with a bunch of trim holes. You gotta fill, you know, like if, you know, if a higher series Nova, you know, has a lot more trim on it. So 65s are kind of a bastard year. They got eyebrows. Yeah. And they have a bumper with the turn signals in the bumper. <laughs> oh, quit. The turn signals in the bumper instead of up in the top here. 65 is the only one that has it like that. In the first gen, <laughs> first gen Novas only have the uh, two, three, and four, they have them up here in the grill. 65s are down in the bumper. So that makes it kind of unique. 65, 100 series is the only year that has the small back window. So I don't know, I like the way they look. I just like them. This one has ghost planes, you know, cause it's, it's super fast. 
I kind of want to leave them. I want to leave the front fenders because it gives it character. Um, let's see what's under the hood. It's missing a few parts. Just a couple things. What is this? We got a six cylinder radiator that doesn't appear to go to this car. I don't know what this goes to. Either way, it's going in the trash because there's no way that's gonna cool that. So that's gonna have to disappear. Now it's just dirty and dusty, but somebody came through and cleaned all this and painted it. And it, it looks like the front end is rebuilt. Like, look at the shocks. Everything looks new. Look at the master cylinder. Look at this, look at the box. If you look under the car, look at the sway wire inlings. It's new. If you look at the ball joints and stuff, somebody's been in here. Somebody's rebuilt this. Look at that ball joint. That's new. So that's awesome. The front end feels tight. When we were pushing it and stuff, I was feeling the steering on it. It's it's actually really tight. So I think the front end is rebuilt or basically rebuilt, been rebuilt. Some look at the new hardware. So I'm pretty sure the front end is rebuilt. And then when I was back here, the only, the only thing that made me nervous was when we were pushing it, there's a clunking sound back here in the rear end. I don't know if I can hear it. I don't hear it. Somebody got creative in the back with some crazy shackles. Those are gonna disappear immediately. So, I'm making mental notes of what we're missing. I also noticed we're missing the gas tank. And there's no bolts. Well, man, that's why it was clunking. There's, there's no bolts in the uh, cover. It's only being held on with two bolts. No, I take it back. One bolt. So... There's only one bolt in it. So that's not good. The trunk pan looks good. I don't see any rust holes. It's actually a pretty solid car from what I've looked at underneath. I have never jacked it up yet. But from what I can tell, there's no, no rust. Somebody, these shackles are new new-ish but it looks like the bushings are old <laughs> so I need to order some shackles actually I think I have some some stock ones so we'll get some bushings ordered up we'll swap out the bushings we'll get rid of these shackles because I don't like it anyway we're gonna have to address this rear end this car is already a five lug because it's a 65 so you know it's a five lug and so this means this should be an 8.2, an 8.2 10 volt rear end, which I have had a lot of luck with. Okay. Now, some people will say that rear end's junk. You can't use that rear end. It's going to blow up. Well, let me tell you something. I got friends who run as low as nines in the quarter mile with that rear end. So, my blue wagon runs 11s with a stock rear end with stock axles. So, I'm telling you, you can put a posi in this, put a posi in it, and just send it. Because you don't have enough tires back here to really break it. You know what I mean? Like, you'll, you'll smoke the tires before you break it, most likely. Now, if you had some big old giant meats under here maybe i'd worry but uh, an eight inch slick no it's gonna be fine rebuild it 
put good hardware in it, put posi in it, it's fine. Now, we're missing a gas tank. I have one out there in my secret shed. I've got a stash of parts. So I'm making mental notes well, so we can go shopping out in the shed. <laughs> uh, we need a gas tank. So add that to the list. I know I've got one, so I'll dig that out. But anyway, we need bushings, a gas tank. Let's see. Let's take a look inside the trunk. Trunk, oh, there is a gas tank. Okay. Looks like we got a new hood piece too, a new hood trim piece. Oh, these are sweet. And it's got all the letters on it. Look at that. Sweet. Cause that one in the front was beat up. So I've got a new hood trim piece. This is 65 only. So those are kind of hard to come across. Let's try not to break any letters off of it. This one's in really good shape. That's a score. Those are worth a few bucks, let me tell you. What else we got back here? Oh, I was just talking about these. I don't know what these, somebody's bagged and tagged a bunch of stuff back here. Look, there's some, sh there's some shackles right there. There's a set on these springs. So maybe I can switch those out. See, maybe we're doing good. Oh, I see something else too. Look at that. This is the 100 series only trim piece. It goes right there. Sweet. But we got door handles. I got one trim piece. Is there another one? There should be one for each side. Oh yeah. Sweet. Got both of them. But these are like the backup light delete plates. Because it's a 100 series, they put this trim piece right here to delete that. They delete on that. This car doesn't even have backup lights. Cause it's, like I said, it's the poor man version. Okay. What else do we got? Better gaskets? See, these are, now these are spears. One of them is 65. One of them is not. Do you know the difference? I do. This one's 65. This one, come right here. That's all that goes on the trunk. I kind of like it, it's simple. That's what's cool about the 100 series Novas is they're super simple. Less less frills and trim all over it. This one I believe is 63. Comment, comment down below if you know for sure. But yeah, this one doesn't go to this car. This one does though. So it looks like I'm doing pretty good on trim. Since, which is good because there isn't a lot of trim on this car, so. <laughs> All right, license plate light, that's good. There's a front front turn signal. I've got bumpers. I do have bumpers out in the shed, I know that, for a 65, because I bought new ones for the blue wagon, so I saved my old ones, and I'll put them on this car if I have to. The rear bumper on this looks pretty good, actually. So maybe I just need a front one, because it was missing, so I'll have to I'll reuse my old one from the blue wagon. That's good. That's about it for the back here. Here's the old diff cover. Somebody put a chrome one down there. That looks like the original one. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Now what I was hoping to find, and I haven't found yet, is this piece. These pieces right here are super hard to find. Cause again, 65, 100 series only. 
it has this piece that goes right there. And I was hoping that it was back here in the trunk. But these, oh, I know what these are. These are pretty hard to find too. Yep. They go here. So that's good. That's good, good, good. I got at least one of them. I got two of them. I got three of them. And I got them. Okay. Okay, that's good. These are the front. Um, these are the front trim pieces that go for the rain gutter. Okay. Again, the car is pretty nice. There's no rust. That's you know seeable. And there's some bondo back here. That's definitely bonded up, which is kind of scary because you don't know what's under there. Is it a giant rust hole? We don't know. So that's not good. But for the most part, it's not terrible. That's pretty solid. I don't feel anything under there. So the wheel lips, wheel wells ain't too bad. That is pretty bad. The other side's missing here. I'm really lucky to find that piece of glass with the trim on it. Right now it's just sitting in here, but remember, if you saw the video where we rescued these out of uh, Robin's backyard, I was pretty happy to find this piece of glass. All right. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. Oh yeah. Okay, what do we got? We got some back seats. I don't know what these are out of though. I hope this fits this car because I have a front seat. I have a stock bench seat, the folding two door bench seat. I have one that actually came out of a 65. Thanks to Jason, he gave it to me. So it would be really cool if one of these back seats fits. It looks like I got two bottoms and a top, but I don't know for sure if that's Nova or not. I don't know what it came out of. If you saw the videos of us pulling these out of the backyard, you'll know that Rick passed away. So we don't we don't know what some of these parts and stuff. He kind of pack read it in here. Looks like we got bows. It, it's just surface rust. Nothing's through yet. There's no cancer. drive shaft hopefully that fits i'm putting a short nose turbo 350 in this car so i need a drive shaft if one of these doesn't fit i have the old one that came out of the blue nova so looks like we got some wiring dangling i know that probably the under dash harness is no good here because i saw when i picked the car up how hacked up it was Looks like somebody cut the dash for a radio. 65s normally have a trim piece that goes across the bottom, except for the 100 series Noah's. It doesn't have any, any trim across the bottom. It just has these little rings. And it looks like we have all of them. It doesn't even have a cigarette lighter. Check that out. It has a cigarette lighter delete. <laughs> so this car did not even come with a cigarette lighter. So, yeah, let's go around the other side. First off, there's a set of heads sitting here and somebody spotted it when I got this out. These are Fuelies. These are 462s. So those are 64 CC head camel humps. So, and I was talking about this, we need to, we need to make a decision about these. Now, the 350, if you saw the video, excuse me, excuse me guys, excuse me, coming through. If you saw the video where I took this apart, that's the little 350 engine from the uh, swap meet. I picked it up from the swap meet. And it had some, it's a good 350, 
But the bottom half, the bottom half was good. The top half was junk, like smog heads. So what my plan was for the 63 was to put a top end on that 350 right there. Um, I have a 650 double pumper. I've got a performer manifold. So really, if I just put a set of heads in a cam, I was gonna go hydraulic roller. Hydraulic roller, set of heads, have a 350 right there that we could put in the 63. That would work beautifully. This car, my plan was to drop this in it. If you saw those videos, that's a 406 that we just got running. I got fender wall headers for it. So we'll have to do some modifications. We're gonna have to do some cutting and moving some brake lines and stuff. But my plan was to drop that in here with fender walls with a turbo 350 tranny that my buddy Justin's building for me right now, probably as we speak, in like a 3,500 stall. So we'll get that rear end squared away, probably rebuild it and maybe put like 373 gears or maybe 411s in it. A turbo 350, 3500 stall, 406. That will make this thing pretty snappy. You know what I mean? Pretty snappy. The glass is in good shape. I like that. Chrome's on it. I like that. So, oh yeah, where were we? So, I have these 462 Vuelies. I could get these rebuilt and put them on that 350 over there and put that in the 63. Now, a lot of the purest and older guys, they're gonna say, yeah, use those. Use those Fuelies, they're awesome. And they are. For 1960s technology, those were, they, those were awesome. The 461, 462s, 292s, those camel hump heads was, I mean, that was it back in the day. That's really what you had, you know? But here's, here's, here's how the math works, okay? Those heads, the intake runners, they are about 160, 165, somewhere in that ballpark. By the time you take those heads and you put stainless steel valves, valve springs, retainers, screw and studs, guide plates, all the machine work, surface them, valve job, all that, clean them, put them together, okay, parts and labor and machine shop bill, you're gonna be into these heads for, I don't know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars okay? And they're gonna flow 160, 165 cc intake runner, okay? Which is okay especially for a stock 350. That's perfect, actually, they'll be fine. But the drawbacks are they're cast iron, they're 1960s heads. You don't have accessory bolt holes, you know, the accessory bolt holes for like brackets, pulleys and brackets and stuff become a problem. And you're, you're gonna spend, you know, like I said, six, $800 parts and labor and machine work to get screw and studs, guide plates, stainless steel valves, all that, okay? Or you can order a set of Pro Max heads or something similar, okay, for 1100 bucks, and they'll flow better. They already have screw and studs, guide plates, everything. You can have them ready to go for your hydraulic roller cam right out of the box, you know what I mean, for about the same price, a little bit, few hundred dollars more difference, and they're aluminum, and they have accessory bolt holes, and I think the smallest ones flow 185 cc's, 185 cc intake runners on those, don't quote me, but I think, so they're gonna be more performance, they're gonna be aluminum, they're gonna have stainless steel valves, all that, and they're gonna ship them to your house in a couple of days, and you're done open the box, clean them real good, and put them on. So what do you guys think? Use those for the 63 on that 350, or do I upgrade to something modern? 
I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Keep it old school. Reuse these, reuse these old fuelies. What do you guys think? But anyways, that's for the 63. So I'm, I mean, we're juggling projects now. Remember that you got to keep up now. Okay. We're juggling. This is, uh, this does not belong here. This is, uh, more hacked up wiring that doesn't belong here to this car. So I think we're going to be pulling this harness out and probably replacing most of it. We're definitely going to have to get us a turn signal switch in here because that does not belong. Because I, you know, we can't have that. The rest of the dash looks pretty complete. That doesn't, that doesn't look right. That is definitely not the right knob. And I'm miss, so I'm missing one of my chrome trim pieces. I got the one for the wiper. I got the ones for the heater controls, and I got the one for the ignition switch. I do not have a key for it. I hope you just noticed. A little water pump you know that's that's good for a core you know I mean, i'll probably i won't use it but we'll use it for a core charge you know we do have a clutch pedal i could use that for something else because this is going to have an automatic in it so i need to switch that out we need to pull that pin up top and we'll get a, a brake pedal one that's the wider one we'll switch that out so we're not going to put a stick in this and it looks like the floor on this side well, it's hiding a secret. Somebody's laid a piece of metal over. So there's going to be some cancer somewhere over here. Somebody laid a piece of metal in here. I was just talking good about the floor pan, and now look what we find. But the floor isn't cut up like the 63. The 63 has got a big old hole in it. So whatever, we'll have to deal with it. Maybe we'll get a patch panel for this. Uh, we're, we're getting to that next. The, the discussion is about to, we're gonna have to switch gears here. What, what do we do with this car? You know, do we take it down and have it painted? Because the elephant in the room is right here. Oh my oh God, what happened? What happened? Well, it looks to me like somebody tried to weld in a piece of metal here, okay? And if you've ever welded sheet metal, you know, butt weld sheet metal, it tends to warp. You get some, you get some warpage. So, it looks like they tried to repair it. They took the, they took the uh, rain gutter and they folded it down and they tried to open it up. It looks like they were gonna try and skin it to probably fix this mistake. And here we are. So again, what do I do with this? Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I have a body guy. He does pretty decent paint jobs but he's actually really good at metal work okay the guy he was in the military for a lot of years and he was he worked on aircraft airframes he was like an air frame guy who did like sheet metal work and stuff you know on aircraft so he's pretty good at shaping and bending and cutting and metal work they're actually really good at it so I was wondering if I just took this down to him, what if we just, what if we get it running and driving? I have the engine, the transmission's on the way. We'll get this rear end squared away. I'll get the wiring fixed, okay? And it'll run and drive. And then we take it down there and I just have him, hey, you up there in the tree, can you, can you keep it down? It's that guy right there, see him? He's yelling at me. Okay. If we get it running and driving, I could maybe just take it to him and uh, let him just beat this out, cut this out, fabricate something, and just get it, just get it as straight as possible. 
You know what I mean? Bend this, bend this back up. Hey, really? Get this, get, get a rain gutter back on it. Get the skin kind of flattened out and just get it kind of as straight as possible. You know, I'm thinking this car is going to be like a duct tape drag type car. This is going to be like a no prep kind of, you know, weekend fun car for somebody. This is not going to be a restored, you know, like restoration project. It, it's, it's a little too rough for that. You know, and by the time you fix this or put a new roof on it, like, is the car worth all that? You know, what if we just sand it down, have him shoot it black primer, have him beat that straight as possible, beat that lip as straight as possible, get it in black primer, you know, and that's, it's maybe that's as far as I go with it. You know, it's just not, it's not, I'm not going to say it's not worth fixing. It is worth fixing and we're going to fix it as good as possible, but it's, I don't know. It's again, this is not some numbers matching SS like six figure Barrett Jackson car or something. You know what I mean? We're not, it's a concourse rebuild or something like I picture this car as, you know, maybe a younger guy weekend no prep duct tape drags take it to the track beat the dog poop out of it you know have fun with it this is not gonna be show car quality by any means there's another drive shaft hopefully that fits we got windshield oh Oh, oh, sweet. Wait, this is the other side. Uh -huh. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's it. Those are super hard to find. <laughs> we got them. Hell, yeah. Okay, it's it's looking up by the minute. Anyways, so pull those heads out. I need to start pulling this stuff out of here. We'll start assessing what else is in these boxes and stuff. But it looks like we're doing good. We got the trim, we got most of the chrome, we got the new hood piece, we got those pieces. We got, you know, don't 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 look at that. We'll we'll rebuild that. Don't worry. We're gonna have to do some wiring for sure. Anyway, glove box. So far, I'm 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 not upset that I bought the car. I'm 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 not upset. It's just a little rougher than I would have liked. Like that's that is seriously somebody cut that out. Yeah. Ugh. Why did you do that? Did a tree fall on it or something? Why? Why were they trying to patch it right there? And why such a big patch? <laughs> I don't know. Look at this weld. Ugh. I don't know. So, anyways, I think my buddy can fix most of this. Like, he, you'd be surprised what he'll do with sheet metal. He'll heat it and cool it and bend it and beat on it and get it, you know what I mean? And then we just primer it. Get the whole car at least sanded down and primered. The wheel well on this side is definitely, this side looks better. Yeah. The other side has some Bondo. This side might have a little, but not. It's not bad. The wheel lip looks all right. I think somebody laid a piece of metal on this floorboard. That's all right. So, what do you think? What do you think? 
my my plan is to get this running driving mechanically sound steering stopping starting you know steering moving under its own power if i can get that i got a seat out in the shed like i said hopefully this back seat fits we'll put that in there so it'll have seats hopefully that gas tank is good if not i got another one fix these shackles hanging down get some bushings in it new bushings i think the front end is good so we're going to leave that alone i think i've got a set of welds drag stars we'll put some drag stars on it skinnies in the front of course scout we'll put that guy in it i got some fender well headers i also have my old exhaust can you see that there's two sticks of pipe right there that is the their 40 series Flowmasters three inch exhaust and they dump right in front of the axle so those those were on my blue wagon so they'll bolt right in this car just in case anyone was wondering station wagons sedans it doesn't matter the wheelbase is the same the wheelbase is the same you can take a drive shaft out of a station wagon and put it in a sedan exactly the same wheelbase so that exhaust should bolt right in so i've got exhaust i got seats i got an engine i got a transmission we're gonna keep that rear end we'll just rebuild it oh is any of this making sense what do you guys think give me give me your input seriously there's a there's an old chrome oil pan back here. I don't know. Well, I gotta start making a list. We'll get some parts ordered up and we'll get started on this. I think we're going to do what I, do what I said. We'll fix everything that we can. We'll get it mechanically running and driving as best as we can. And then I think I'm going to have to sell this car. I don't want to. I want to keep them all, you know. But I need to sell this to pay for a nice paint job and nice quarter panels and stuff. The, the 63 needs quarter panels and stuff. And it needs a decent paint job on it. Because that thing is a 63 no post. You know, it's, it's worth doing that car. If I got to sell this car to fund that car, that's what I gotta do. We gotta strip all this. See the purple, it was tinted and it turned purple. So we need to scrape these windows. You hear that? The door sounds good. Look at the seam on that. That's not bad. You hear it? It actually, that's pretty good. So the, the biggest problem is the roof. You know, this car's actually pretty solid, except for that roof. I don't know. All right, I started pulling stuff out of here. And this bell housing, I'm hoping will work in the 63, because I'd like to put that Saginaw tranny in it, but I don't know for sure if this will fit a Nova or not. I want to say the Novas had this in a different location. I thought it was higher up. I'm not sure. Any Nova guru out there know? I'd like to try and use this, but if not, then I don't know. I'll have to order something else. But I do want to put the four speed in the 63 behind that 350. So I know we're, we're jumping around here a lot. I'm sorry. So the fuelies, I took the fuelies, stuck them over here. I need to know, do, do I send those to the machine shop, put them on that 350, or do I order something aftermarket? It is going to be a hydraulic roller. I'm not messing with a flat tappet. So I want to go hydraulic roller. I need a set of heads. Do I, do I try and use the fuelies, or do we order something aftermarket? So that's... Question number one, and it's for the 63. 
The other question is, will that work with a Nova linkage? I don't know. What do you guys think? Anyway, I gotta start pulling all this stuff out of here. Some of it's trash, some of it's who knows what it goes to. I don't know. Well, just digging stuff out of here. It looks like we got some head bolts and hood latches. That's an aluminum water pump. So, a short aluminum water pump. So that's cool. But then I found this. It looks like a brand new clutch, but it says nine inch. I don't know what it's for. I don't know what it's for. There's a pressure plate and everything in here. I think it's too small for that, for that uh, four speed. So I don't know if this goes together or not. I really don't know. You know, it's kind of bittersweet digging through this stuff because the person that this came from is no longer with us. So it's, I don't know if you saw the videos, but how we came to purchase these two Novas, you know. So I can't ask anybody, you know what I mean? But it looks like there's a heater box. I don't know if this is for a Nova or not. He had several projects going. So I don't know if this is Nova. It could be Chevelle. I don't know. Valve covers and stuff. Oh, I need engine mounts. I gotta dig those out of the shit too. I've got, I think I've got a set of frame mounts. Let's see, I don't think I have them. Nope, okay. Add that to the shopping list. The shed shopping list. <laughs> I need the frame mounts, V8 frame mounts. So I got a set of those, I'm pretty sure out in the shed. I've always, I always keep at least one set, but yeah. I don't know. Just digging through it. Well, there's a there's a quick look at the 65. I'm already going way too overboard with the talking in this video. Sorry, I apologize. Not too much action. I promise I'll correct that next week. We'll get the wiring harness out of this thing. Maybe start on the dash. I'll get some bushings ordered for that rear end. Maybe we start putting the engine in it. I got to do some cutting. Before you do the engine, you got to do, if you're going to do fender well headers, there's some cutting I need to do and some brake lines that need to be moved. I'll show you all that. But anyways, what do you guys think about those heads? I need to make a decision about the 63 so we can finish up that engine. So I'm literally, I'm going to try and juggle both these Novas at the same time. I think I have just about everything I need to get this thing running and driving and drop the engine in it and all that. So. If any of that sounds good to you, please hit like, hit subscribe, hit that bell, follow along, tell your friends. That would be awesome. So I promise you more action next week. So until then, see ya.